Hi, this is James Scott, Boar in the Bayou. In this episode, we're reviewing the game Paladins of the West Kingdom by Shem Phillips and S.J. McDonald. That's one to four players, ages 12 and up, 90 to 120 minutes, published by Garfield Games and Renegade Game Studios. This is a worker placement game by Mrs. Shem Phillips. If you recognize the name, he's done the North Sea Saga, which were a series of Viking-based games. Just recently, he did Architects of the West Kingdom, which I had the privilege of reviewing and just loved. One of my top 10 games of the year and probably my favorite worker placement until now. Now, he, he knocked himself off the top of the, the mound. I, I love this game. Uh, this, is, this is my favorite worker placement game going. I... I just can't say enough about how much I love this game. It is so much different than Architects, where they both deserve a spot on your game shelf. They're they're they play different. This one is a little a little less take take that. Whereas Architects, you kind of mess with the other player. This is more drafting. Uh, let's go ahead and let's look at it. First of all, the center of the board. You will have these. See if I can do this. You'll have these little boards. And I say little, but these little guys take up a lot of real estate. Now they're about 30 inches wide, but you're gonna have cars going across the top, cars going across the bottom of the other one. You're gonna have a pool of the, your coins over here for your taxes. It, it, yeah, it, it takes a lot of room up. So don't, don't let it fool you, this game and this little box takes up a lot of real estate because you also got player boards. Each player gets their own player board. You're gonna be putting cards along the top and you're putting cards along the bottom. So like, like you can imagine with four players with all this plus that in the center, it's a lot of real estate. And on the back of these is an AI for a single player. So you literally play single player is the same as you would a multiplayer except for you play one board and you set up the ai on the other board and this has a almost like a, a simplistic uh logic circuit to it with a, a separate little deck that you will draw to do his actions on what where he's going to do his workers now like i said it's a worker placement you're going to have in this game I love is you got six different workers. You have your laborers, your scouts, your merchants, your fighters, your clerics, and your criminals. Your criminals is your purple. Shem takes my favorite color and makes them the criminal. Thank you, Shem. I appreciate that. The those are the wild. Now, why are they different colors? Well, if you look on your your board, different spots in your board when you place your worker you're gonna they're gonna you're gonna need them certain ones for different actions the white locations anything can be played there but the ones that are the green the red the black and the blue only those colors can be put there or the purple you'll have up along here as you can see you're gonna you're gonna start with these with some workshops over here, you're gonna have some monks. Over here, you'll have some outposts. And down here, you're gonna have some of these uh, vases, I forget what they're called. Over here is your, your track. On your track, you're gonna be uh, tracking three different stats. Faith, strength, and influence. Which are, you have these three different colored flags to mark each one so you know what they're, what they're for. Now, why are you, as you can see, as you go up, they're going to give you victory points depending at the end of the game of wherever the, each one is at. So you, it'd be nice to have all three at the top. Odds are you're not going to do that. So I use a recommend pick two and run with two. And concentrate kind of on one, but and have a second one close behind. Third one's going to be lagging a little bit. Why are you going to be doing that? Well, let's kind of look at the game. It's the main board here. On the main board, in this side of the section, we're gonna be setting up 
we're gonna, it, it shows you right here, the game is played over seven turns. And first you're gonna have these cards here. I forgot what they're called, but they're the King's cards. And these are gonna be victory point cards, these first three. The first three turns, they're gonna, as, they get, as you go, they're gonna be revealed what the King wants. He's either gonna want five, you to have five buildings, or you wanna have five worker, or five, uh, you know, different things he's gonna want. And whoever get has that, you're gonna get those victory points at the end. So there's, th these are some goals. Obviously, this last one's worth the most points because you have the least time to, to work on it. Then after that, you're gonna place these cards, and these cards here, as you can see, they're, they're a little, another extra spot to put a worker every turn. Oh, and these are what these these cards look like. Like I said, they'll they'll show the little what what five he wants. Along this top here is where you're going to be putting different workers you can uh, add to your kingdom. You can what I like I really like about this game is when you go on your board and you do the recruit action, you have two different choices. If you put one worker there. You, you can basically get rid of the worker. It's a one-time use. And yes, these are the workers. And if you look, the worker up top here has this one-time use. Let me see some different ones here. They'll have their one-time use, and then down below, they'll have their permanent ability. If you, if you just use one, you just pay the extra cost if he's further on, on the board you know, it also has the cost here. You you can do the one time and just get that one time bonus, whatever it is. Or if you put a white and a red, you can go ahead and you can add them there. And sometimes you'll ha you'll get like this little instant bonus and then this game bonus for the rest of the of the game. And you put these by your your board. And. Uh, this board <laughs> this one gets a little more fun yeah and i will say this don't worry your eyes are glazing over on some of this stuff i'm, I'm gonna kind of run through it kind of quick warning analysis paralysis can happen with this game and most likely will you will get players with analysis paralysis there is just so much going on in this game it takes a bit to get used to don't worry about making mistakes it's no, nothing in this game is a mistake that you can't correct later on. The this is up here is a little coffer thing. As you get anytime you get a purple worker, a criminal, you get suspicion. You draw one of these suspicion cards on the back. On the other card, will tell you how much of the coins you take out of here. Once all the co coins are gone, there's an inquisition. You check who has the most suspicion. They lo lose it. They gain a debt card. You remember these? You probably remember these from other shim cards. Uh, the debt cards are back. Along the bottom, you're going to have the raiders coming in. These raiders are, are like just like the workers. Only difference is when you go on these, you have a choice. You can either attack them or convert them. If you attack them. You get this one-time bonus up here. If you convert them, you can get them and put them on your board and pay the additional. There's a spot on your board. You have to pay the, the cost for the slot. But you'll have here, it's one or zero and one to attack. Two faith and three to it. So depending on what you want to do on those raiders, do you want to attack them, get them the one-time bonus, or do you want to you uh convert them and, and have a permanent bonus and a lot a lot of those are in-game scoring so i would you try to convert a good amount of these because these these are definitely some good points in there also too depending on your rank of your faith or your strength when you use a monk when you commission a monk or you garrison and you use an outpost, you get to put one of those on one of these spots and you get to cover it for the game and get that one-time bonus. 
So in order to put one on here to get two silver, you have to have either two faith or three strength and do that one action, place it on there, cover it. And now you got that two silver and nobody else can put it there for the rest of the game. These, these are nice. None of them are really that huge. There, there are some on this end that are really nice you want to work to. So that's another advantage of kind of going up in one of these two and get and being able to place in some of the, the sweeter ones at the end. The On your board itself, again, let's look at. This side is basically your, your general actions. Use this to build one of your workshops you take a workshop off of here and you place it over here on this side the reason why you do that is well you cover up that spot for the rest of the game let's uh, say so you cover that spot up now in order to do this one you just got to use an any and a black or an any and a uh, blue or if you put two green here all you gotta do is pay a blue and you can do that action really really nice uh, another one is go hunting it gives you some food you need food for to do these up here and you also need influence uh, trade gives you coins recruiting which I, I mentioned earlier one uh, to one use uh, 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 one in a red to get them and, and put them off to the side you pray you pay two silver you remove all, all your guys off one action so you could pray take your guys off do uh, do the action again pray take them off put the action again uh, conspire, take it, convert one of your guys into a criminal. You do a criminal, and then you you draw one of the suspicion cards. Take take the coins from the coffers. Then on this side, as you can see, there's a little symbol over here and here. This means if you're if this will basically you're using your faith to gain more influence your influence to gain more strength your strength to gain more faith so you can look at going wow i need to get up my influence well i can either use my strength to get up my influence or i can use my faith to get up my influence so that's a, a neat little little cheat sheet kind of to tell you what's going to happen these actions are commission which is to use your monks take a monk from here and put it on your main board. Fortify, you grab one of these cards and you, you'll have to have the influence and pay the food in order to put this up there. And you put this up here and you, make, you get the little wall and you get this one time bonus. Strength, uh, strength a white worker and a red worker. There's, and like I said, you could see where on the fortified showed you're using your you needed blue and you ended up getting red because every one of these is going to give you at least one strength, some multiple strength. This one here, you're going to be using your uh, garrison, so you're going to be removing one of these and putting your outpost on the main board. And as you see, you're as you remove it, you're you're gaining faith this one here you're going to move one of these vases from down here which also have a call minimum cost of so your influence has to be so high hence the reason why it says blue it's going to give you faith you're going to take that vase and you're going to put it over here this one is going to depending where you place it you're going to get a one-time action this one here is attack which i mentioned earlier which you can also pay coins to increase your strength and convert which you take those raiders and you take the raiders and you put them along the bottom so the first spot would be free the next one's going to cost you a silver this and that Whew. <coughs> that's not all and anyway, wait there's more at the beginning of each turn you're going to draw three paladins on your paladins, you're going to decide one to keep, one to go at the bottom of your deck, and one to go on the top of your deck. And also to help you decide what you're going to be that turn is you're going to have the tavern. The tavern is going to be where you're going to get your, your main workers at. And depending on how many players, it's the amount plus one. 
these are, are going to show you what workers are available and you're, you're going to choose. So you can take your pallet in and figure out, well, uh, this one's going to give me a black and a blue. He's going to give me a, this is, these are just temporary bonuses for that turn, uh, three influence and a one strength and absolving is not going to cost me any silver. So I can figure out that one and I may, I may choose that card. You, you just basically rotate it and take those meeples out of the pool. So I'm going to get a black, I'll have two blue, a purple, nope, got to get a suspicion card, and two, two red. And that's going to be my six workers to start to turn with. There's a lot of times as you're doing different stuff and you're moving, moving the different cards around, you're going to un, un open up more workers. So it's not uncommon to do. So, you, so you're going to place a worker. The next player is going to place a worker. But you keep going back and forth, place workers until you can't place any worker or you pass. When you're passed, you're done. And the other player can keep going. And then when all players have passed, that turns over. You reveal the next one, reset. Choose your next paladin. Set up the new tavern. Get new worker, uh, new workers to choose from. Slide over your raiders. Get refreshed a little bit. And that's that's more or less the game. I, I, sorry if I confused you people. Uh, I try to explain as much about it the game without really going into a, a rules game, a rules video. The components of the game are great. These these boards are really nice. They feel sturdy. You can tell the paper that this is uh, used on is real real good quality and and folds up real nice. The card stock is real good quality, nice and I would say bent, uh, not, not bendy bendy, but it, it shuffles really nice. Good quality. The wood meeples and pieces the only thing i wish i wish they would have done these worker meeples in different shapes also with the colors because as you can see here here's a sample of what these meeples look like to different types of colorblind people i imagine you can mark you could mark them some type of way so that it make them easier for a colorblind person uh it, it'd been nice that they were different shapes but the rule book, I want to take a particular shout out to whoever wrote this rule book. This is how you write a rule book. This is a fantastic rule book. It is well explained. Samples, when you go to each phase of the game, it goes this phase, does the whole phase, and then a bunch of examples and some clear photos. I can't say how much more I, I, I love about the rule book. Uh, wh Shem, whoever did your rule book, or if you did this, great job. I love it. This is this is how you do a rule book. Uh, it's thick. Uh, there's, you know, it's, it's great. <laughs> and I think that's pretty much about it. So this is James Scott with Bore in the Bayou. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe below. Thank you.